Hello, it's me. I was wondering if after all these years you'd like to be to go over everything. They say the time's supposed to heal you, but I know. Can I be a pain again? You're not being a pain. Can you tell me the time? Ten past two. No, it's finally died on me. Oh well, it's had a good run. It's lovely. Is it an antique? Well, it's as old as I am. Does that make it an antique? <laughs> Don't answer that question. <laughs> I thought men didn't age, they matured. Oh really? Like cheese? <laughs> well, the smell's sometimes similar. <laughs> <laughs> My wife bought me this for our anniversary. She has great taste. In watches, maybe. Not so much in men. It was made the year I was born. She tracked it down, got a certificate to prove it. It's just as old as I am, just as knackered by the looks of it. Are you meeting her for lunch? No, she's young. Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Please, it was a long time ago. I'm sorry. But you weren't to know. Yes, well, still sorry. Well, look, you're very kind, indulging an old man, interrupting your coffee. It's fine. I won't tell you about the war. Pardon? <laughs> I know you've got sat next to this old man and you think he's going to start telling me about the D-Day landings, what it was like under Russian, 12 different things you can do with a powdered egg. <laughs> no, I assure you I won't do that. It's always the same though, isn't it? Go on the bus or the train, somebody latches on to you. It happens to me every time. Whenever I'm on public transport, someone wants to tell me their theory about the Loch Ness Monster, how they rub skin, carried into their skin at night to prolong their youth. And then one day they stop. Until you realise they haven't stopped. You've become one of them. It happens to all of us. One day you pity the fool on the bus and the next you are the fool on the bus. I swear, one day you just look like your father. So what was it like under rationing? What? What was it like under rationing? You can tell me about the D-Day landings too if you like. I don't mind hearing about the past. I'm actually a history student, studying for my MA. Ah, are you now? At the university. Oh, ah, well that's very fortunate. So what was it like under rationing? You really want to know? Yes! I've no idea. I'm not that bloody old. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, yes I do. <laughs> something else that catches up with you, you know. You look in the mirror one day and see a crazy old man looking back at you. Well, in my case it will be a mad old woman covered in cats, but I know what you mean. Oh no, you don't. No, I'm not being rude, please. But God, no. At your age you should cherish it. Because soon, you know, there'll be the aches and the twinges. When you go to the pub, you choose the one with the comfy seats and the quiet music. <laughs> then will come the wrinkles, oh, and the grey hair. And before you know it, you become your father. Time passes quicker with every breath, I swear. You look good for your age. Really? How old do you think I am? 87. <laughs> <laughs> She's with it as well. Nearly, but not quite. My mum always said I've got an old head on young shoulders. When all the other children were playing doctors and nurses, I was playing insurance executive and pension investment fund broker. Oh, well, there's nothing wrong with that. Hang on. Is that a drop of rain? Oh, I hope not. Ooh, I think it was. You know, having these tables outside it does tempt fate. It's okay trying to create a Mediterranean feel in the coffee emporium of our sector dial. But people should realise England is the rain god's promised land. Well, there's nowhere inside. It's packed like sardines. Oh, I don't think so. Even sardines would put up with conditions like that. <laughs> I'm sure it's against health and safety to cram people in like that. <laughs> anyway, I won't be here long. I'm meeting a colleague. He's always punctual. Wish mine was. Are you meeting a friend? Yes. No. Sort of. Oh, gloriously enigmatic. I'm on a date. 
Well, I will be if he ever shows up. Oh, are you now? A blind date. A first blind date with a complete stranger. How exciting. It's terrifying. But haven't you spoken to him on the, um, the Facebook? <laughs> yes, I have used the Facebook. and He seems nice, but, you know, seeing a photo of someone and reading a few messages isn't the same as actually meeting them in person, is it? I mean, I may be expected to be witty and charming. I can be witty and charming in an email. It's not time to think about it. Hours to consider, to sculpt and rewrite and hone my wit and charm. But in person, in live time, sometimes my wit and charm isn't nearly as spontaneous. Ah, oh, well, first dates are like that for all of us, you know. I remember the first date I had with my wife. We were set up, like you, on a blind date. I thought it'd be a mistake. I mean, she was so very beautiful, with, with a kind of enigmatic smile. I thought, no. No, there's a mistake here. Someone I know who knows me thinks that I'm in any way compatible with this, with this vision set in front of me. I thought, this is a fraud. I'm committing an act of fraud sitting with this girl, and she's soon going to realise what an idiot I am suffering from severe foot-in-the-mouth disease. I mean, every word was, um, uh, well, uh, it was dreadful. Truly dreadful. You can't have been that bad. She did marry you. Well, yeah. That haunted me for all our married life. Every day I used to think, this is the day she finds out what I'm really like and goes off with someone else. But she never did, poor girl. I think your wife was lucky. You obviously adored her. I really don't think words have been created to fully articulate how I felt about my wife. Would you like to join me? I'm sorry? Well, I'm getting a bit of a crick looking around at you like this. We may as well sit together. But you're waiting for a fellow. He's nearly... Half an hour late now? I'm not entirely sure he's coming. Well, if you don't mind, just for a few minutes. My colleague will be here soon, I'm sure. Of course I don't mind. It's lovely to have someone to talk to. I always feel strange sitting in cafes and restaurants by myself. I feel like everyone's staring at me. Look at that poor old spinster sitting by herself. Oh, come on. What are you, 21? I'm worried about being a spinster. 24, and yes. I've never been blessed with much luck with men. I see a house with lots of cats and me wandering around in a faded wedding dress in my future. I still think you're a bit young to be saying things like that. All my friends are attached. It's tough being the only single one in a group of happy couples. Look, if you don't mind me saying so, then please, please accept my word that I'm not a dirty old man. But you are a very, very pretty young woman. Now, come on, you must turn heads wherever you go. You're not a dirty old man? How disappointing. I thought it was every man's desire to end his days as a dirty old man. Yeah, well, I will say that the will is still there. But I find the thought of being lecherous far too exhausting these days. <laughs> you know, old age does have its disappointments. You know. How horrible. Well, you enjoy life while you can. That's my advice. I'll do my best. So how old were you when you met your wife? I was 26 and she was a few years younger. And was it love at first sight? Yeah, yeah for me, yes. Not so much for her. We had this kind of war of attrition to which she finally surrendered to shut me up more or less. How long were you married? 30 years. I know. Scary, isn't it? Seems like a lifetime, really. And just like that. And then one day she was there. The next. Well, the next. I'm sorry. Cancer. It's horrible. Word. A horrible word for a horrible, murderous thing. My aunt died from cancer last year. It just seemed to come out of nowhere. One moment she was fine, and then she was feeling a bit tired, and then the next thing we knew, she was gone. Sometimes I wish it had been like that for my wife, but I'm afraid it took hold inside of her and spread and just killed her slowly, cell by cell. She was in hospital for weeks, and they wanted her to go into a hospice, but she wanted to come home. I'd made a bit of a career out of doing as I was told, so I took her home, but you know, when I carried her into the house, she was all bones. She was like a sparrow, light as a feather. One thing she never lost was her spirit. She never lost that spirit. She fought with her spirit right. Look, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be saying this, but the last thing you want is to be in conversation with some over-sentimental old thing. It's fine, really. It's wonderful to know that a love like that exists, that anyone could love someone like that. 
Maybe this young man would love you like that. He's nearly an hour late now. The only reason I'm still here is that I'm talking to you. If I hadn't met you, I'd have gone home ages ago and been ranting about it to my friend over setting me up as such a loser. But, but maybe, for all you know, he's got a good excuse for his tardiness. Did he give you any indication that he might be the kind of guy that would mess you around? No, he seemed quite sweet in his messages, but... I don't know, he hasn't even phoned or anything. I mean, if you're going to be late, at least ring. Maybe he dropped his phone. Maybe the battery's broken. Maybe he's an idiot. Oh, it's definitely that. All men are. Well, at least you admit it. Well, at my age, there's no denying it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. The clouds are going. Don't think we are going to get that storm after all. No. So what do you do? As little as I can get away with. <laughs> Every morning I wake up and find I'm not dead in a pleasant surprise. <laughs> you said you were meeting a colleague. I still dabble. In what? Would you believe I'm a scientist? No. Neither would I, sometimes. You look far too normal to be a scientist is what I mean. Well, that's my wife's influence. She would never, never tolerate me being too eccentric in public. So what area of science are you in? Oh, please, you don't want to go down that path. My work is wonderfully, exceedingly dull. It's all theory and conjecture. In what field? Oh, quantum theory, time dilation, temporal displacement theory, that kind of thing. Time travel? No, no that's a huge But subject. you've worked on time travel. I've done a little bit of work on time travel. I thought it was impossible. Uh, well, there are two... I thought Einstein said so. Oh, well, he certainly thought... I would love to travel in time. Oh, would you now? I'm a history student. Of course I'd love to. Who wouldn't? Wouldn't you think it was... So impossibly dangerous, though. What, because I might go back and kill my own grandfather and cease to exist kind of thing? Or because there'd be cavemen throwing spears at me? Both, probably. Oh, you'd have to risk it, though, wouldn't you? I mean, just to go back and see what it was all really like. To go back and see the pyramids being built. Stonehenge, the Roman Empire, the Battle of Hastings. It would be wonderful. Or go back in time and catch the plague. That would be lovely. You're telling me that you've worked on time travel and you've never thought about what it might be like to go back. I didn't say I'd actually worked on time travel. I mean, you make it sound as if I'd been stuck in my shed at the bottom of the garden making a time travel machine out of an old movie. <laughs> no, it isn't like it shows in the movies. It's all discussion and theory and conjecture and, and argument and, and maths. Lots and lots of maths. It's unpicking the universe to find out what's possible and what isn't. And is it possible? What? People may travel in time? Well, there are, as I've said, there's a huge amount of views on no, that. No, but I want to know what you think. Do you think that one day there will be time travel? I mean, actual time travel? Me? Now, don't forget, I'm just an old man that you've met while you're waiting for a blind date. But yes, I do think that Probably, one day, maybe possible. In my lifetime? Oh, no, no, not in your lifetime, I'm sorry. Damn it! I wanted to go back and see Henry VIII, see what all the fuss was about. <laughs> oh, well, the choice is uh, infinite, let's face it. So where would you go? Well, like you, most people would go and see the birth of Christ, go and see the dinosaurs. But that's most people. I want to know about you. What would you do? Honestly? Honestly? I'd go back and see my wife. I know. I know it's soft, isn't it? But, you know, the expense is great. It would cost billions upon billions to take my theories and the theories of my contemporaries and build a device capable of punching a hole in the space-time continuum, let alone the power that it would need. I mean, it would be a miracle to come up with a device like that. Even a prototype would be way beyond the budgets of most countries in the world. So you'd think that given that kind of expenditure, that I'd want to go somewhere monumental. But no. I'd go and see my wife. Just to see her face, hear her laugh, see her smile. But that's just me. It'd be worth it to me. Only to me. That would be the only reason to do it. But wouldn't that disrupt the timeline? Wouldn't that cause ripples or displacements? Well, yes, I suppose it would. Especially if I went back when she knew me. I mean, she'd recognise me and wonder why I'd suddenly become so old. And then I suppose, yes, it's possible that the universe may collapse. 
that would depend on whether we carried the wrong or not in our <laughs> equation. But no, and this is supposing that such a thing as time travel, but it's only a theory and there most certainly is not. Of course. So, I'd probably have to go back to before she knew me, when I was a complete stranger, someone she met walking down the street. I wouldn't be able to tell her who I was, where I was from, anything like that. Wouldn't be allowed. But that sounds so sad. To go all that way, to bend the laws of time, to break the laws of physics, as they say in Star Trek, and not be able to tell her who you were. Wouldn't it break your heart to be that close to her and not be able to say anything? Yes. Yes, I suppose it would. But then again, knowing me, I'd do something stupid, say something wrong, let something slip. No. Better to go back and see Henry VIII. Better to go back and do anything else. No. I think it would be wonderful to go back, to spend even a minute more with the woman who meant the world to you. <clears throat> I mean, that's love beyond anything I could ever imagine. Or maybe I'm just a sentimental old fool. No. You're lucky to have had a love like that. I mean, I can only wish that, well, someday maybe someone would love me like that. Don't you worry, my dear. I'm sure that one day you will. Is that your colleague? Oh, yeah, that's him. Time's up, I'm afraid. Look, can I pay for your coffee too? Oh, no, you don't have to. Oh, no, come on, please. You've been very kind indulging an old man talking about all this nonsense. Don't be daft. I've loved talking to you. Please. You've kept me very entertained. Okay, but I insist. Thank you. Right, well, I must be off. Kathy! I'm sorry? I just realised we never properly introduced ourselves. I'm Kathy. Hello, Kathy. I'm Thomas. It has been a sheer delight to meet you. Maybe we'll run into each other again? I'm in here all the time. Can't survive without my caffeine fix. Oh, well, you never know. Anything can happen. Goodbye, Kathy. Goodbye, Thomas. Oh, by the way, when your young man turns up, give him a chance. He may have a perfectly good excuse. I think I've been well and truly stood up. I'm going to go home and curl up on the sofa with a ton of cookie dough ice cream. Oh, well, you never know. Goodbye, Kathy. It's me, we were supposed to meet for a... I'm so sorry, I'm so out of breath. Oh, I was going to get the train, but then there was a fatality on the line. Then I thought I get the bus, but I got the 24 instead of the 42. Oh man, well, I mean, it took me to the other side of town, and I couldn't get another bus for, for another hour. And then, oh, and then my phone died and I couldn't charge it, and I'm so... I'm so sorry, I got stitched. I thought you'd stood me up. No, never, I'm, well, I'm, I'm not that kind of guy. It's just, I thought everything, fate, the gods were conspiring against me. I, I didn't think you'd still be here. Well, I wouldn't be. But I ran into someone, and... Well, he said I should give you a second chance. So you know what? I am going to give you that second chance. Let's have a proper first meeting. Hello, I'm Kathy. Hi, I'm Tom. Tom? Thomas, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm so pleased to meet you. <laughs> Do I get that train? <laughs> Hello? Sorry, what? I I'm sorry, for a moment there, my imagination was... No. I, I mean, yes. What are the chances? I don't follow you. No. No, you probably don't. Thomas. Yeah. Why are you staring at me like that? Have I got something on my face? No. No, you haven't. <laughs> Come on, let's get that drink. Yeah, let's. Tip it. Oh, do you know what? I thought it was going to tip it down a minute ago, but it seems to be clearing up quite nicely. No, I think it's all going to be fine. Anyway, what do you do? Well, actually, I'm working on my doctorate at the moment. Quantum physics? <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear you? It's not very boring, I'm afraid. I'm in California dreaming about who we used to be when we were young.